Hey guys, how's it going? It's Phil again, broadcasting you another video. Now this topic is pretty big. Um, it's got a ton of steps involved, but I'm trying to break it down uh, as simple as possible. And as always, I'm not gonna uh, go too much into the technicalities. My focus is to get this uh, thing up and running as uh, quickly as possible, so you can get on with playing your retro games. So the topic of this video is networking under MS-DOS. So believe it or not, you can connect your MS-DOS machine to your home network through the ethernet cable and copy files across. And that's what we're gonna look at. Um, so I tried to make a to-do list and, and hopefully I didn't leave any, any uh, steps out. So the first thing you have to do is source a network card or network interface card. So let's have a look at two options. Okay, so here I've got my two network cards. Now I've got them for my friend and neighbor, Wayne. Wayne, thanks for borrowing me these uh, network cards. Uh, it's quite funny, I live in the middle of nowhere and my neighbor is into retro computers as well. So yeah, fascinating. So we have two cards. I've already played with the Realtek and I managed to get this going. So this time I'll try to get the uh, D-Link to go. Now, with these cards, you have to just identify the number. For example, that's a DFE 530TX. Um, on the Realtek, I had to identify the chip number. Hang on, there it is. Uh, RTL 8139C. And armed with that knowledge, so with the brand and the uh, part number, the model number, you can go then to the website and download the uh, packet driver, which is what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we have picked our net network card, so we can take that off. And next part is we're gonna install the network interface card into our retro PC. Okay guys, so all we have to do here is Install our network card. So you just have to find an empty uh, PCI slot and then just line it up like so. And then give it a proper push, making sure it's it's installed. And then of course we're gonna secure it with a, with a screw. Like so. And then we need our network card. We just gonna, might not be able to see it. We're just gonna plug it in here. And we know we know that it worked if we get a light. So I'm just gonna fire it up. And we should get some flashing lights in there. There you go. You can see the lights. Wonderful, okay, so that's working. Okay guys, so we've done these next two steps. We've uh, installed a network card and we hooked up the uh, network cable. So basically the network cable um, goes into my uh, internet uh, switch uh, slash modem slash router, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got an eight port switch which connects all the devices in my, in my uh, house. And next to it, I've got a internet broadband modem. Okay, so the next step is we have to source the packet driver. So we go on the internet and we're gonna go to the D-Link website. D-Link support. Um, yep. And then on the left side here, so we look for that model number DFE. There you go, DFE and then 530TX. Hit go, downloads, drivers for DOS and netware. And I think that link, yeah, that link didn't work. So I had to go somewhere else. I had to click, let's have a look. I think I just clicked on just that, yeah, downloads. And then I've got revision A. And this takes us to the drivers page. And I believe it's this one. There you go. Let's have a look inside. And that's what we need. 
pack a driver. So we're gonna we will copy all of this. And I've got my solid state which I'm using in my uh, retro computer here. So we're gonna go to drivers. I will create a new folder. Uh, let's call it short for packer driver. And we're just gonna uh, copy it. And we can close that. Okay, so we've done we've done this bit. Next, we have to download MTCP. So let's go to Google. MTCP. There you go. So let's have a look. Downloads. Click the download button. And we need the binaries. Click here. Open it up and we go back to our uh, hard drive from the retro computer. I create a folder here, MTCP, and we copy all this across. Okay, so that's done. So I've done all this. Now we need uh, the file Scylla FTP client. So we go once again to Google file Scylla. Ooh, that is download. Um, Windows client. Yep. So I must have already have a, I must have already installed it, but we're just gonna install it again. Okay, so we're just gonna close that. Okay, we can take that off. Okay, next I'm gonna put the solid state into my retro PC. Now as always my videos are raw, I don't cut around a lot. Um, so I'm just taking, if I talk really slow that's because I'm taking my time. I rather want to make sure I don't forget any, any steps. And hopefully we can, we can see the other computer over here. Hang on. I'll put that across here and this to the left. Put and then we configure the plugin. Plug and play resources. Now I have to use two keyboards here, so hopefully I don't get confused. So on the right side is my uh, retro computer. So we're gonna go into the BIOS and uh, if you had a look when I inserted the PCI card. Uh, which slots I put them in. The first card is the, um, what comes first? The network card, yep. So network card will get interrupt 10. And then the second PCI slot is my uh, SATA controller for the, for the hard drive. Um, I always assign interrupts manually. And also set the interrupt nine to legacy, so it doesn't get used by any other devices, because that's um, for my uh, Roland MPU 401AT. Um, that card can sometimes 
freeze or crash if if another device is trying to use the interrupt. Um, in my computer, I can also use use inter uh, interrupt three or four because I have the COM ports disabled, but that's really up to you. Okay, so let's get out of this. And when we boot, we should actually see there's a table with, with all the resources and they should show up in the order just like we configured them now. So that's the SATA storage controller and there you can see the list. Um, so we have the ID controller. Okay, it's good interrupt. Oh, that's the onboard. So yep, 10 and 11, just like we configured. We're gonna go with that one here. Okay, so we done this bit, those two. I can cross it off. So next we have to run attempt to run the packet driver. So I copied it into drivers and then packet driver. And let's just have a look with what file it is. I think it's the D link and then F E T. Alrighty, so yep. And we run it again and now we have to I think we just have to give it an address. So we type 0x60. And hopefully we get uh, a MAC address. There you go. Um, so it calls it Ethernet address. That's uh, the MAC address. Every network card has a physical MAC address, which is unique in the world. Um, and we need that. So we're just gonna write it down. I've got my notepad here. So double zero, 50 B A, A5, D, E, and 6, B. Now, that's ready to go. Um, for future reference, what I usually do is I put this in the, in, in the batch file. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna write down what we typed. So it was D, L, K, F, E, T. So I create a batch file. Edit, uh, let's call it, uh, what do we call it? Packet drive batch file. And all we do here is run that file. And then it was, 0x60. So let's run it again. Actually, we can put an echo, echo off here. Okay. Let's have a look. It was a com file. Okay. not an executable oops bit of a lag here so yeah so it says it's already loaded which is brilliant so every time we reboot we now just have to type in uh, packet driver and it loads the uh, the batch file so that's all good and next we have to look at dhcp so we go into our mtcp folder and now there are a lot of steps involved in here so i might stuff it up in the first go so don't copy the steps just yet so let's type let's type no actually let's not this point comes before So we connect to our, um, my home modem. So that's where you can conf configure your, uh, your home internet modem. So I'll get, go to DHCP server, address reservation, and we add a new reservation. This means that whenever this 
network card with the MAC address we wrote down, uh, request an IP address. We're gonna give it, um, we're gonna always give it the same one. So the MAC address, that's what I wrote down. So it's zero, zero, and then 50 uh, BA, A5, D, E, and then 6B. And IP address, we're gonna give it 192.168.1 and then 109. And that is enabled. So at the moment, yeah. So the DOS rules, that was from, uh, from before because uh, I played around before. So let's actually give this a different one. Let's give this uh, eight. There you go. All right, so that's good to go. So that's done. And now we have to configure DHCP. Okay, let's just run DHCP, see what happens. So it says, okay, we need to set the, um, the variable. Okay, so there's a config file we have to open. I think it's called sample config or something. There it is, sample config. I don't think host name, we can give it a different name. Retro PC. Um, not quite sure if we need that. The first three are required and the rest are optional. see what else is here. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about these. Oh yes, the password file. So here, there's a password file in here. We just have to change the folder. So that was an MT, MTCP. And same for this one. So that's the folder where we copied the whole uh, MTCP and I think that's it and then we just have to set our variable so we go set MTCP config and then we have to tell it where the file is. So it's in C and TCP. Um, TCP.config. Unless I haven't renamed the file. I think it's still called sample. Yes. So sample config. And we just save that again. So we go file save as and we save it as mtcp.config. And let's get out of this. Okay, let's hopefully it all works. So DHCP. Alrighty, error config file tcp. Okay, so I think I named it wrong. Rename mtcp config to tcp config. Okay, there you go. We've got an IP address. We can see it's 192.168.1.108. That's um, the reserved IP address. So if we go back to our interface, we do a refresh, we should see our retro PC. There it is, retro PC, uh, MAC address. Um, and it's got the IP address. So that's very good. We're slowly getting there. So we've done all this. 
And now I just gotta figure out this bit. Now we have to create an FTP server on our retro computer. So there was another file we had to edit, the password file. This one. Um, and I'm just gonna create an anonymous Actually, let's put myself in. So, fill and password admin. None. Not quite sure why there's so many spaces here, or if we don't need one, but anyway. So I've got a username and let's see if we're almost there. So let's try to run the FTP server and see what happens. So it says need to specify the password file in the MTP config file. Okay, so Ah, there it is. <laughs> I forgot to remove the uh, the common character. Okay. And now, FTP. Oh, still an error. Okay, error. Bad drive letter. Okay, what's going on here? So. Just get maybe you have to get rid of these. Maybe that's the problem. So we just have that one user account. And there it is. So our FTP server is running. And now so we can cross this off. And now we run FileZilla and connect to the retro PC. So we open our filezilla host, that's the IP address, so uh, it's right here. So 192.168.1.108, username, fill, and password was admin, and port, let's have a look. Do we have to enter port? Hmm. Have a look, see what happens. Oh well, seems to work. So, yep. So here we go. So here's the uh, drive on our retro computer. So we can go in, in, into our games and we can uh, muck around. Let's say I want to delete some stuff. Um, let's say I want to delete my origin. Let's have a look how much stuff is in there. Yeah, quite a few games. Actually, I don't want to delete anything. Let's just create a. I don't want to stuff anything up. Let's create a new folder. So right click, uh, create directory and call it uh, games2. So just want to show you, you can see that the uh, FTP server, it, it keeps track of what's going on. So let's go into our games2 folder. And on our computer, So we'll just see where we are. C drive, users, documents, retro computer, compact flash back up, super socket seven, games, origin. And let's select all of that and we just drag it across. And you can see our computer going nuts and copying files across. Now in terms of Speed. Let's just make this big. Oh, it's got some failed transfers. Not quite sure what's going on here. Um, 
So down here we can we can see how much it still has to copy. And that's really it. So in comparison to pulling out the compact flash card and putting it in my in my desktop, I, I found it's 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 not fast. It's around 500 kilobyte a second. So um, I'm used to like 20, 30 megabyte a second. So if I copy a ton of games, it's a lot faster with the compact flash. But the main benefit is that you don't have to shut down your computer, um, and you can also write your own bash files. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, I'm not going to show this in video, but I'm going to create my own batch files, like one called online and the other one offline. So if I type online, um, it does the whole thing with the DHCP and the packet driver and, and fires up the server ready to go. And I've copied my stuff. Then I can I type offline again and you can actually unload the packet driver form from the memory so it doesn't take up any RAM. And you can I can go back to uh, testing my games. So. It's 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 growing on me. I'm I'm not gonna say that I prefer this over using my uh, compact flash and my laptop hard drives, but it's quite a cool it's quite a cool thing uh, to have if you have a a stationary computer that doesn't get moved around. Because I have a ton of test benches and I play around with a lot of hardware, um, I'm not gonna network all of them. Uh, the only machine that gets networked is is the main uh, time machine because that's where I'm going to put all the games together. All the other ones I'm going to stick with compact flash cards. Okay, there you have it. We covered a lot. Um, hopefully it wasn't too difficult to follow, but I did my best to, to make it as simple as possible. And hopefully someone out there is, is going to be able to replicate the thing and build a little DOS uh, home network themselves. Okay guys, thanks for watching.